hello everyone and welcome back to my channel this video is super long overdue and you guys are probably like what the heck are you even doing here you usually only post around the holidays to touch on that actually because i did not post my christmas day video this year which was the first year in i don't even know how long that i didn't post my christmas day experience i actually filmed the whole thing and i edited most of the video then it got super busy at work for me so i never ended up getting to post that video but the real reason i'm actually back and this kind of sounds crappy to say this but i got an email the other day from youtube that said that if i don't post a video within the next 30 days my youtube partnership goes away and i don't really know what that means i know that part of it is that i get revenue sharing from the views on my videos from adsense but because i don't post very often i make like a very insignificant amount of money like every other month i'll get like a payout but it's so small that it's almost not worth talking about i know at the time when i made partner i had like the ability to post longer videos and a few other things so I don't know what it means in 2023 to lose my partnership, but I thought I would just like chat, get ready, show you some of my favorite products that I've been using for the past several months and then make dinner. I wanted to come back and get your guys' feedback, what you wanna see from me. I just feel like I've been in a rut with my channel. I don't really know what to post anymore. Maybe even if there's things that I don't share often or that I haven't shared before that you think you would like to see from me, then please let me know. One of the things that I thought about because it's something that actually like consumes a lot of my time. My free time really goes to just getting lost in a good book. So I thought maybe during this vlog, I would show some of my favorite reads that I've read this year. And I really have no reason to get ready. I just figured I would show you all some of the makeup items I've been loving for the past several months. So going in with my Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. I'm in the shade Medium Plus. I love this stuff. I have four of them. That's how much I love it. It evens out your complexion, but it doesn't look cakey. It's not like a foundation. It's almost like foundation submerged in a gel. Some things I do, and I think that they could be done better. This Clay de Poe concealer that I use to kind of carve out my eyebrows. I used to love the Clay de Poe concealers, but they changed the formula and it's not as good. I kind of hate it, to be honest. It doesn't blend out very well. So I have my brows kind of outlined with the concealer. Um, and it looks a little crazy now, but I'll blend it out after I'm done my brows. I'm going to go in and fill them in now. And this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit in the shade 3.5. What I like about this is that that it's more ashy than the one I used from Anastasia Beverly Hills and also I find that it's not as like soft and smudgy and it's waterproof so it stays in place much better another thing I've been loving is not a product but this Royal and Lang Nickel Omnia Dome Shader Brush. This is what it looks like. I've used this for my concealer. I saw that someone said that this is like the brush that Kylie Jenner's makeup artist uses on her. And it's actually, I think, a painting brush. I got it on, on Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was like maybe like $10 or something. But it really applies under eye concealer so nicely. So for under eye concealer, I'm just using foundation because I don't want it to look too cakey. Um, also, this is not like a super high coverage foundation. It's just the Luminous Silk from Armani. It is a little bit large, so I think it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it blends out so nicely. It's almost like a kabuki brush for your eyes. I think that's why I like it. And then, just on like the very inner corner, I like taking this Hourglass concealer in, this, in the shade Beach. I just do like the tiniest dot right in the corner, just to give like a little bit of brightness on the inner corner. Another product I love, but I'm hesitant to even talk about where is it because it's so hard to find this. I don't even know if they still make it. I know that it's often hard to find and then it'll like magically like reappear on Sephora, but I haven't seen it in a long time and I haven't seen it on the company website. This is the Neo Nude Melting Color Balm Cheeks and Eyes. It's from Armani. You guys can see I've already hit pan. I use this every day. It's almost like a cream, but then it sets like a powder. This is shade 20. If anyone knows where to find this so I can like stock up in case they do stop making it, please let me know. So I apply this all over the top lid and then I also carry it underneath the lower lid. Another somewhat recent find that I've been really loving 
is the Dior Maximizer 3D. And the reason I like this is not really that the product is so special. I mean, it is, it works really well. I used to use the Lancome primer. The reason I ended up switching it is because they keep increasing their prices, which frustrates the crap out of me. I've gone back through my Sephora orders from like the past few years and saw that they increased the prices, I wanna say like over $10. And that primer has how many? Five milliliters in it. And this has 10. So it's basically the same product, but I think this is even slightly cheaper and you get twice the amount. So I've switched to the Dior one. This just makes your mascara look so much nicer. It just like sticks so much better. I feel like it makes my mascara look more black and intense. For mascara, I'm still obsessed with the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. I never remember the name of it. I feel like this is like my Lancome Hypnose Custom Volume Mascara on steroids. It's so much more black and pigmented, but also you need less of it or like fewer coats to get that really extreme dramatic look. So moving on. Milk Matte Bronzer, one of my all-time favorites, and this is in the shade Blaze. And I also really love this Makeup by Mario brush, and this is F1. It has like the perfect shaped tip to like apply your contour. I use this as more like just to warm up my complexion, but. The next thing I'm using is another one of my favorites. This stuff is also a little bit pricey, but it's so good. It's the Prisa, no, Prisme. Libre powder by Givenchy and this is in the shade Voile Rosé. It's a very finely milled setting powder and this one has a slight pink shade to it which just makes it look extra brightening. It's especially nice under eyes. You don't get that like cakey powdery look. <laughs> the lighting's like... Mm. A mess right now there's like so much sun coming through the window now I'm gonna set my face with the airbrush flawless setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury um, I got the small size of this because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or if it was really worth the hype but when I run out of this I will be getting the large size this is such a nice setting spray moving on to highlighter I'm going to use the rare beauty highlighter these are so pigmented and pretty these are the two shades this one's flaunt and then this one's exhilarate One's more of like a pinky champagne gold, and then the other one's more like a true champagne gold, so it has less pink in it. I'm gonna use the flaunt shade on my cheekbones. This one I feel like looks much nicer if you have a tan. So glowy though, just so pretty. And then I'm going to use the shade Exhilarate on my eyes. And what I love about this routine, is that it actually only takes me like 20 minutes so I can get ready super quickly and if I want to get ready even faster than that I'll just like skip a couple steps. And then for lips I've been loving these NYX lip liners in the shade Nude Beige and London. Super inexpensive. And then I'm going to top it with this lipstick which is MAC Creme de Nude. I used to use this all the time. This was like my go-to lipstick. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys that I love, and I don't use this during the week, but I use it on like weekends or if I'm going out. This palette from Pat McGrath. It is the, the Divine Bronze Luxe Quad. Love the packaging. Pat McGrath always has such nice, like heavy, good quality packaging. I'm gonna use this shade down here, which is kind of like just pure glitter. I love how it just picks up the light and looks so magical. It's gonna be a good shade for the holidays. So this is the makeup. It's so glowy, but look at the glitter. It's so pretty. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I love, love, love. So that's it for makeup. I'm going to share some of my favorite books that I've read this year. I read a lot of ones I really did not like, more than typical. If you are on Book Talk or if you are following any book Instagram accounts, you have undoubtedly seen this book. This took me over a month to actually get the physical copy of it. This is Fourth Wing. 
if you've heard about this book and you're on the fence about reading it because it's super hyped right now it is worth the hype it is so freaking good even if you're not a fantasy reader i think that any person who reads it will enjoy it. Sebastian just finished it today and he's so hooked on it. He's like, I can't believe you made me read this now and I have to wait until November until the next one comes out. And he's not like a huge reader, but he didn't want to put it down. It's so, so good. It follows 20 year old Violet who is entering into a war college for the first time and she had trained her entire life to follow in her deceased father's footsteps and be a scribe where she would spend her days with books and history. She's described as being a very weak, frail, fragile person with brittle bones. That was like the safe route for her. Her mother, however, has other plans and she forces Violet into the same quadrant that she and her siblings, Violet's siblings, um, entered into which is the rider's quadrant it is the deadliest of all of the quadrants and she has to figure out how to survive i think only a third of the people who enter into the quadrant make it to graduation so it's extremely extremely dangerous it's incredibly gripping the romance is amazing i feel like the author did such a good job of writing the romance it's enemies to lovers it's definitely my favorite trope it's got open door romance scenes not for probably like a younger reader if you're an adult then this is definitely a lot of fun very spicy in some scenes action-packed it's quick paced so you don't feel like it drags at any point where they're stuck in a certain area for too long it's so exciting i highly recommend this the next book that i loved so much this year this one was so incredibly touching it like made me so emotional reading it. Colleen Hoover, she writes really complicated romance so well. She said that she's tried to write romantic comedies and she just can't. She writes romance, I feel like, better than almost any other author where you just feel totally captivated by the story and the characters are very flawed and they're always very complex. This book had me in tears many times. It was really emotional and you really empathized with the main character. They're not lighthearted, but they always end up feeling really great at the end. This book follows Kenna, who is a young mother who just spent five years in prison for the death of her baby's father. So she's coming out of prison and she moves to the small town where her daughter lives, who she's never gotten to spend even a day with, trying to fight to get her daughter back in her life. And it follows her story and her story of trying to get her daughter back. Along the way, she falls in love with someone. I mean, it's a Colleen Hoover novel. You know she's going to fall in love, so that's not like a spoiler or anything. It's an enemies to lovers. I almost hesitate saying it's an enemies to lover trope because I feel like that's like overly simple. It feels like someone wrote this about their real life. Totally heartbreaking, but also heartwarming. And if you want a good cry, this is a good book for that. The next book that I wanted to talk about was Up Until Fourth Wing was the best book I read in a very long time and it's called Woman on Fire. I actually bought this book for Europe last year and I never ended up getting to read it and I was honestly by the time I got around to it I was like do I really want to read this? I was trying to make my way through some of the books I had bought that I never actually got a chance to read so I ended up reading it. It's a historical fiction. I want to say like 10 out of 5 stars. Like it was so freaking good. Again, the characters were super dynamic. The story felt so real. There was just so many different things going on. I feel like I will do it injustice if I describe it so I'm going to read the description, the synopsis. Okay, so watching this back I actually really disliked the way that the synopsis for the book was written so I figured I would just do a quick voiceover and give a brief synopsis of the story. So the story follows Jules Roth, a young journalist who ever since she was a child has always aspired to work with Dan Mansfield one of the most praised investigative journalists. So she maneuvers her way into a position under him and begins to realize this position is not at all what she expected it was going to be. Almost immediately, he thrusts her into an unexpected and highly sensitive assignment that's shrouded in secrecy. Her mission is to track down a painting of a mysterious woman that was stolen by the Nazis during World War II for the world-renowned shoe designer Ellis Baum, kind of like the Louis Vuitton of this fictional story. And he wants this painting for very personal reasons. 
But of course, there are some major complications. Not only is Jules racing against time because Ellis is dying, but she's also up against Margot de Laurent, who is a ruthless art gallerist, and she'll stop at literally nothing to get this painting first. What I loved about this was that it had so many elements I loved. The romance was really good. The adventure was amazing. The history that you got to pick up from it. Everything about this book was just incredible and I wish I could reread it again for the first time. Probably one of my favorite books that I've read in several years because it's so, so good. It's not a book I would typically pick up, but I'm glad I did. Another book that I really enjoyed, but I would only recommend reading if you did not read The Last Mrs. Parrish. I had the unfortunate experience of reading The Last Mrs. Parish like either a book or two before it and I almost felt like I was reading the same book twice but the following book was actually much better than, than The Last Mrs. Parish. So if you've read The Last Mrs. Parish, don't even bother reading this book but if you haven't read The Last Mrs. Parish, I feel like this book was actually better and this is also available on Kindle Unlimited. Okay, so the book is The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. This was really, really good. A thriller, twisty. I think I read this like in a day. I read it really quickly because I just could not put it down. So a summary from Amazon says, every day I clean the Winchester's beautiful house top to bottom. I collect their daughter from school and I cook a delicious meal for the whole family before heading up to eat alone in my tiny room on the top floor. I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up, how she tells strange lies about her own daughter and how her husband, Andrew, seems more broken every day. But as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes, so full of pain, it's hard not to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband. I only try on one of Nina's pristine white dresses once, just to see what it's like, but she soon finds out. And by the time I realize my attic bedroom door only locks from the outside, it's far too late. But I reassure myself, the Winchesters don't know who I really am. Loved it. I would have loved it a lot more if I hadn't read something so similar. I don't want to say too much because I feel like I could end up giving it away, but it would also be a good movie. I would very much enjoy that. If you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments below. For dinner, I'm making something I've never made before. I've been seeing a lot of recipes with like corn and cotilla cheese and elote style dips. So we're gonna do that with chicken. I've never made this before. If it turns out, I'll leave the recipe in the description for you all. One thing I'm really excited about though is this hatch diced green chili. Oh wait, can you grab the other one? This one's hot. Wait, which one? They have different, we have different counts. Oh. I got this in the US at, was it Safeway? Fashion, or no, Fred Meyer. Yeah. These are supposed wow. to be like very special. Um, and they're grown in the Hatch Valley, I think, of New Mexico. The way that I got introduced to these chili is from Trader Joe's. They have a Hatch green chili macaroni that is so good and it adds almost like smokiness a little bit of spice and just like a really really good tasting pepper so i'm going to add this into the dish so yeah that's what we're going to make for dinner and then i'm going to make it with some cilantro lime rice i don't like cilantro i'm one of the people who has the gene or doesn't have the gene that makes it taste like soap but i've read that if you eat it enough you eventually develop whatever it is to taste really? cilantro the way it's supposed to be tasting
impressions on dinner. It was amazing. It was. It was so good to me. I was like, that was one of the best things I've ever made. We are going to make this elderflower martini. When we were in France, we ha we were drinking um, Saint Germain spritzes all the time. Mm -hmm. It tastes like it tastes like lychee liqueur. It's just such a like floral, fruity, delicious flavor, but it's actually from a flower. So we're gonna start off by juicing some lemons. I never knew how to use these before. I always thought you like would put it in the, this because that like seems to make sense to me. But the actual way you're supposed to use these and the way that it works the best and it's easiest to squeeze them is like you put it in the opposite side, it squeezes all the juice out. I need like an ounce. So much more efficient. I know. You have to try this drink. If you want to impress a guest, make this drink. It tastes like you have like a really fancy martini from a restaurant. Also, I just recently bought this martini shaker from Amazon. It's like triple or double vented or something. It's so much nicer because your hands don't get cold while you shake it. What brand is it? SLM. I'll link it. Another great thing about this martini shaker is that this like little part here where you can put the alcohol and it has measurements on the side. So for this drink, I use an ounce of vodka and this makes two drinks. So one ounce. This is, I can't open it. Elderflower. Elderflower syrup. Um, I will link everything in the description bar. I got this from amazon.com. We don't have it in Canada, but it's so it good. like this one. Yeah, it's, you could probably also use lychee, um, the syrup that's in canned lychee. It has this like sugary syrup that it's in. Can like, have you ever had canned peaches? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the syrup that it's in is like sugar. You could probably use that. It would be probably like dead on. Otherwise you could just use simple syrup, which is what we did initially, but we add one ounce. And then Saint Germain is three ounces. And that's why it's almost all gone. Well, I did make it for my sister when she came, so. Everyone loves this. Mm -hmm. We made this for my sister and her boyfriend. They also loved it and they said how dangerous it is because you yeah. cannot taste the alcohol. Yeah. yeah, it has no flavor of alcohol, which is like, I, in my per personal opinion, the most dangerous kind. <laughs> and then I'm adding an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Shake, shake, shake. glasses are they not so pretty we got this from cb2 the other day but just crate and barrel top it off with a little bit of club soda a little bit of effervescence and then for garnish a little lemon curl So I'm just coming on to end the vlog. I realized while I was editing that I didn't have an outro for the video, so I thought I would do that. It's been a couple weeks since I filmed this vlog. I got so busy in between the last clip you guys saw before this um, and now because I was doing this public speaking course. It's kind of like an all-encompassing course on how to just really improve your stage presence and overcome blasophobia, which is like fear of public speaking, which is what I have. The whole process was really fantastic, but uh, I felt like I was almost back in school again because I was constantly working on speeches for my next class where I would have to try to memorize my speech, but that never ended up happening. I'm very bad at memorizing, but also just because I am so afraid of speaking in public which you probably would not guess considering I have a YouTube channel. I'm gonna leave the information in the description bar below. This is not an ad or anything like that. I just um, found this course so incredibly helpful and useful and I really wanna like spread it and share it with anyone else who might be suffering with glossophobia like I am or anyone who wants to improve their stage presence. The instructor, Sonia, she is an absolute expert. She does her training in a way that almost feels like you're preparing to become the next Tony Robbins or I don't know, some really powerful <laughs> transformative uh, public speaker because the 
Training is very extensive. She's so incredibly knowledgeable and she's been doing this for so long and you can really tell it's an incredible program and I'm gonna be doing the, um, she does a Divas Lounge, which is once a month rather than this program, which was I think five weeks in total. But yeah, it was such an incredible course. So I thought I would just plug it at the end of this video. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you're all doing well. I've missed you all so much. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.